hello hello i am back with another video and before i begin and forget to tell you or ask you click the like button before we begin because you want to hear this topic anyway so go on and click the button <laughs> this particular video is a requested video and it's been requested a lot by me but i was doing other topics but i'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this in it's actually to tie into my most popular video on my YouTube channel and it's pretty much when I was talking about my experience when dealing with the goddess of June and so I want to talk about that because so many people are gravitating to that type of energy I want to talk about that in depth a little bit more and my experience a little bit more on this particular video first of all why why did i gravitate to that type of energy and if we could break it down into layman's terms it's just so everybody could really understand it is just almost like having an admiration for a person you admiring a person maybe a person you want to be like when you grow up so to speak that's the type of energy you're gonna gravitate toward and so that's why I gravitated towards the goddess of Shun because of where I was in my journey. I felt like her energy resonated with me. It was the goddess type energy I wanted to evolve into. You have to keep in mind in the physical reality that we descended. We fell, so to speak, from grace, right? We descended, but we're on a journey of evolving into the new age. So we are ascending. And so you're going to want to ascend back to whatever resonates with you and your soul, your spirit, to the larger part of you, right? And so that's why I gravitated to that type of energy. And in gravitating to that type of energy, I did a little bit of research on it, why she intrigued me. and But in my mind, I already knew that I wanted to evolve to a goddess of love, a goddess of uh, femininity, you know, and a goddess of beauty, right? So in my mind that despite all else, it was almost like I admired her energy, what she stood for more than anything. Yeah, I did the research on her favorite colors and all that for my um for my altar and everything and, and, and I, I set it up accordingly, but it was the energy, it was her aura that I was going after in my particular journey. And so in the beginning, that's what I did. I set up an altar. I set up an altar and I began to conjure up this particular energy. You know, I began to develop a relationship with this particular energy because that's really what it's all about. Just like people in church and they'll, <laughs> they'll tell me you know a lot of pastors and you know church people saw that video and they was like you got to be careful with that you know because it sounds like devil devil worshiping and da, da 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 and spirits don't you be careful what spirits you call upon well let's talk about jesus come on now what, what jesus that jesus them that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit so they're doing the same there's altar in church okay they're conjuring up the energy of Jesus when they start to speak in tongue and catch the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing. It's just different types of beliefs. You know, they call Jesus, you know, others might call a shun, you know, or whatever their ancestors or whatever they want to call. Just let people be in their journey. Church folk, if he's watching again. Anyway. So I begin to like sup with this particular energy and in supping with this energy, you know, I don't believe in hindsight of religious beliefs. You know, I don't believe that it does religious people any good to sit there and beg Jesus to fix it. And, 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 and always going to Jesus wanting something. So with my altar, I took upon that belief and I didn't go in just wanting something from just to take from the goddess of Shun. I wanted to give also. I wanted to just be sometimes, you know, so on my altar, 
I would have the four elements. I would have the four elements, you know, the water, the air, the earth, the fire. For the water, I would have like a glass of water on the altar. For the earth, maybe some dirt. For the air, uh, incense. And the fire would be the candles. Or And so I would have, um, because she was a goddess of beauty, you know, I would have little mirrors. Little mirrors that I bought from the dollar store. Just little circular mirrors. Here's one. I don't have my altar anymore. Here's one. They had like a little pack. A dollar store, little circle uh, mirrors. I had little uh, coins, you know, little penny, pennies, copper pennies. I had um, these peacock feathers, you know, she liked birds, the peacocks. And so I would have little birds, statues, and I would have um, um, the little peacock feathers and um, flowers that I would get from Michael's, the little craft store. That's where I got that from. And I, right after Halloween, I would get, you know, little skulls, whatever, little trinkets. That's the best time to get, you know, because when they drop everything off 50 and 75 percent and you could just stock up for things for your altar, you know. And um, and I would have my rose water there. I would have my Tibetan bowl, whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. If you don't even have an altar, you don't need an altar. Because when I started off, I started off with a shoebox and some uh, birthday candles from in the kitchen drawer. You know, it, it's about the energy. It's about the relationship that you're building. So you want to build this relationship where you're not always lighting your candle and going to the altar in need. You go in there maybe just to sup with this particular energy, right? And so you will bring offerings sometimes to this particular energy. While we're bringing off, while we're bringing offerings, while we're bringing offerings, because it. Just like in a biblical text, you know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, right? And so giving is like when you give energy to something, you're building it up. You know, just like why the reason why they have power in the name of Jesus is because you put that power in that name. Others put that power in that name by calling on it. So you got to put some power behind this energy. The goddess has shown. You got to put some power into some thought. Your thought is the power. Thought has always been <laughs> the power. And the beginning was the word, which is an expression of thought. This, this physical reality, this matrix is all about a thought, a collective consciousness. So you have to put in the energy, the thought of wanting to go to your altar, the time, the time, time is energy, turn the word time backwards, we are emitting, E-M-I-T, emit energy into the goddess of Shun. So you light the candle and you, and you just be thankful for that energy. I would just, I would just say, um, it's no right or wrong before I begin. I would just say, I admire your beauty, the goddess of Shun. I welcome you here to my altar to suck with me. Just simple words, nothing, your words from your heart because this is energy and energy don't lie now. You, you're dealing with a cosmetic realm here. Energy does not lie. So your intent is going to be there. So let your intent be pure. And so I would sit there and I would offer, I would give an offering like, for example, I'm a vegan, so I would do like cherries. I would do live food. I never did no cooked food. I would do like cherries. I would do oranges. Um, oranges were a favorite. And um, and so, like, for example, I will peel the orange in half and I'll make sure to seed it, you know, real food from earth, the mother. I will make sure it is a seeded orange and I will make, you know, cut it in half and give her half while I eat half as if I am having the orange with her. Now, logically speaking, we know the goddess of June is not going to eat the orange, right? But it is all about what I say, the thought It's all about your intentions, right? And so you're just eating the orange with this energy, so to speak. You're supping with the energy and you are, you're doing different things, you know, throughout maybe the week, maybe once or twice a week, you're doing something. And then when you're at Michael's and you see another little trinket, you're getting it to bring home to the altar. This is all energy, conjuring up the energy. Uh, it's almost like, um, uh, 
You know, when children are younger, they have an imaginary friend, so to speak. In their mind, this imaginary friend is real, right? And this imaginary friend is not scary because here it is in the physical reality, these energies that are tapped into all knowing, infinite intelligence, God, source energy, just like Jesus per se, that's tapped in. <laughs> they, in knowing all that they know, can help you in your physical journey. You should be putting them to work for you, not being scared, running away from them, but because, but allowing um, them to, and your physical, make you greater, to make you evolve to your higher self. It's almost like um, playing Pac-Man, you know, how they have the four corners where they have the, the little flashing light and you're the Pac-Man. You're supposed to be able to become greater and gobble up the, the ghosts, so to speak. Don't be afraid of them. <laughs> Digest them, so to speak, and move on to a higher level and get more power, you know? So anyway, you should put this, these energies to work for you, but not in the beginning. In the beginning, it's about the relationship. So like I said, back to the relationship, you... You just uh, conjure up that energy. And, and, and so what I did, this is my experience. What I did was like um, in the beginning, you know, from religion, you, you have maybe your go-to, maybe angel. You have your protector, you know. When I was in a religion, I would pray and I would say, I call upon the angels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and St. Clair, with their swords dipped in the blood to cut asunder any spirit that is contrary to what I am speaking, contrary to what I believe. Fight for me. Protect me. War for me. You know, so I would say those things in religion. So <laughs> I had already established that relationship with Michael. So I brought Fort Michael with me is what I'm trying to get you to see here. So when I, when pertaining to the altar, I had already gave energy to Michael. Michael in my mental, cause all is mental here, had already been, had already been a warring type energy for me. So when I would try to go to conjure up or sup with the feminine energy of Ashun, and I would open up this, this circle. It was like an imaginary circle or portal. And I would say, I would point my finger around my, um, around my body, you know, as if I'm drawing a circle. And I would say, Goddess of Shun, I welcome you, your energy, your energy alone into my sacred circle. Angel Michael, stand at my circle. Guard my circle, protect me as I suck. You know, so so in my mind, you know, you're going into another realm. And so you open it up this portal, so to speak. So any other energies could come in and out this portal. But I had my angel Michael at my the gates of my portal, so to speak, protecting me. And I did that because sometimes, you know, in physical reality, you'll have some embedded fears from years ago. Fears of the boogeyman. <laughs> fears of something you saw on TV or whatever. So you want to have that, that, that warring type energy for you so you don't get lost in the sauce. There's some people that get lost in other realms mentally. In two dimensions at one time, they might live underneath the bridge and might really think underneath the bridge is their home. But they, and they talk to themselves and, you know, they kind of, you know, lose it because they're caught up into two different realms at the same time. And so I didn't want to go in with fear. And if you have fear, I would suggest that you don't even go until you, until you feel at ease with it, until you feel worthy. Because worthy is the feeling that you want to have. Worthy is when you're in alignment worthy and, and love is the feelings you should be having not low frequency fear when you're at your altar so if that's the day you afraid cut it out go back when you fix your energy and so what else could i share so i shared that i sat there and i supped with it with her rather and i shared it it's really energy i shared that uh 
what was on the altar. She had not to be afraid. And I had a shrine. Let me show you. I'll show you that. You know, I wanted to show one day, and here's something I would uh, warn you. I, I mean, but you do what you want. I mean, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. But for me, it didn't work out like this here. I had an altar, and I was going to do a video and share. But that particular day, that particular moment when I was about to share what was on my altar, the energy was so against me sharing that. So many things happened that was confirmation during the making of the video itself that I had to immediately stop. So I know when this, if you didn't do it on YouTube kind of reality, it didn't get done. If it's not posted on social media, it didn't get done. And so everybody just share, share, share everything. I would say just think twice about sharing your altar with others. Think twice about posting it and telling everybody, you know, okay, you know, this, this, and this, and this, because if you don't want other energies to, to vex you, you don't want other people to judge you. You want that to be your sacred place, you know, kind of like your prayer closet. You don't just let everybody off the street come into your prayer closet. You want that prayer closet to be where the angels are, you know, where what good energy is. You don't just let all kind of chaotic energy in, you know, your area. So it's the same with this here. And I'm only sharing this here because it's it's about a journey with, with dealing with the goddess of shoe. You become it. Just like I mentioned with the example with the Pac-Man, you become this energy. And so you um, one day do like a celebration that you have arrived, that you have become that feminine energy, that goddess of love, that goddess of beauty. And so you release that energy, you do a celebration, but you never forget about that relationship because now you have a relationship. Now you have like another ancestors that ancestor that is working for you energetically in the cosmetic realm that is helping you on your journey. You know how they say, I have a gang of ancestors that walk with me and talk with me, okay? God is a shoe and is there with you too. So right now in this room, in the physical, it seems as though I am the only one here, but I am here with a plethora of energy. There is no separation because energy does not die. It's just transformed. There is energy here. There's other realms right here in this so-called space. Anyway, this is the shrine that, um, that I, I think, I think I might have just got this from uh, Amazon. This is the Goddess of Shoe and shrine, shrine that I had. Well, I still have. And her little name, I don't know if my camera could zoom in. Her little name is at the bottom of it. And so even like with this here little bracelet, I just got this from Michael's and I saw it. And I bought it home one day, you know, just to adorn her a little bit on her shrine. And so that was like a little gift, you know, and it, just because I was thinking of it, of her or the energy of it assumed throughout the day. And then I went to the store and bought something that's energy. All of this is mental and it is all energy. It works for you based upon where your mental is. It will not work for you based upon where your mental is. You will be afraid based upon where your mental is. You will feel worthy based upon where your mental is. It's about you. <laughs> this journey, this journey is all mental. But it, it, it applies to your mental. Not no God is a shoe mental. Yours. And so I still keep the shrine uh, just in a special place. But I don't. Like I say, I don't even have an altar anymore, but I still keep my shrine and it is in reverence of maybe the relationship, so to speak, that I had. Just like some people in the physical reality still keep a picture of the, their old uh, grandmother or deceased relative, you know, by the fireplace or whatever. It's no different. And so going in this, you know, a lot of people, people judge you. People judge you on everything you do in the physical reality. <laughs> So that's why I say 
just keep your business to yourself, you know. And, and I'm sharing because it's, it's it's past. It's not really my my present anymore. And so, especially women, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of women are going to be watching this, you know, when you're dating and stuff. You don't want to have your altar just wide open for certain men because, you know, uh, men are afraid of that. You know, they run from that. They think you're about to do something on them or whatever. So... Just be careful, you know, be not careful, no, be mindful of where you keep your little altar. Like I said, it's really cool and discreet because for me, I started off with a shoebox and nobody could see that because you just tuck it up in a little area or put it by the rest of the shoes and nobody would see that. But when you have, when you have skulls and bones and little caskets and, you know, fire and, you know, people... You know, just be mindful. That's all I'm saying. Because people don't understand that. You know, and, and they like to stay in their little bubble. And you, know, you you can't pop their bubble. They got to pop their bubble themselves. You They got to want their bubble to be popped themselves for their, before they could ever evolve in a physical reality. So with that being said, you know, just just guard your, 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 your sacred circle. Guard your altar. Guard the things that are close to your heart and don't let other people sit there and pick because those other people that'll pick, they'll bring judgment to you and, and they'll, they'll might, might make you start to feel, because all things are mental here, feel a certain way as if you're doing something wrong, but do what feels good to you, babe. Don't let other people lower your frequency of what you want out of this physical reality and how you want to, to, to experience it. You know, life is what you make it. So with that being said, I think I, I pretty much covered all of the questions. The most, uh, I guess, repeated question was the simple fact of how, how I did it. I, I uh, <laughs> what did I say? What was my words? It's, it's your words. It's your expression. It's your thought because it should come from your heart. Because from the abundance of the heart, that's when the mouth speaks, you know? So you want whatever words to, to be the words that you create. As a guide, I just said, you know, I welcome you into my sacred circle. I had Michael warring for me at the circle, at the gate, at the portal, whatever you would call it. And I just sat... And I just had a moment where I just would breathe, breathe, breathing in that good old prana. That I would just breathe, that I would just be, that I would just allow, that I wouldn't be thinking and having thoughts just rambling through my head. And any time a thought would come in my head, I would dismiss it and stay and pay attention to it now. Or I would focus on the shrine itself and just look and uh, admire it, the beauty, admire the the love energy that I was feeling, admire the feminine energy that I was evolving into. And when that particular session would be over, I would just be thankful for the time for the energy that I felt. And then I would put out the candles. I didn't blow the candles out. I smothered them instead. I smothered them with just a little piece of, um, little piece of cardboard, you know, because my it was in a glass. So I had the glass candles. So I would put a little piece of cardboard on top of the, um, glass container that the you know fat candle was inside of and smother it you know taking the air from it and it would go out that way i never blew out the candle as an insult um what else what else and so that session would be over with and then i'll do something different the next time and for the final time i mean this is something ongoing for a couple of weeks i did a couple of months actually and for the final time 
you know, after we had, you know, there were some sessions where I would sit there and I would, since I had already established a relationship and I gave to the offering, I mean, to the shrine, I gave offerings and stuff and I felt like a connection, almost like a friendship. Then I began to talk about the things that were on my heart, the matters of my heart. And I felt as if those things were all working out for me. And so when I got to that place, I released the energy of the goddess of June because it was almost like I had graduated and now I had become that energy. And so I did a celebration on that particular time that I visited my altar, so to speak, almost like a going away party, like, you know, celebration. And so after that, that was it for my experience. And so I just keep, like I said, I keep my shrine and, and I um, appreciate the, the ancestor that I have gained, the energy that I have gained to work for me and with me, that talks with me, that walks with me, that helps me to stay in alignment to my higher self, that comes to me in my dreams and a vision of the night. <laughs> When man sleeps and slumbers, you know, God, our source energy, would open up my ear and give me my orders and my instructions. And so throughout my channel, if you pay attention, this all started when I began to just be on a journey of health and wellness with eating right. I gained the mental clarity then because Sometimes in our journey, we have ears and we are not hearing. We have eyes and we are not seeing. And that has everything to do with the level or the frequency that, we own, that we're on. So when I begin to become a lighter body, a lighter avatar, aka increase my frequency, these are the things that I wanted to experience. These are the things that I wanted to explore. Now, lower level beings, they might not understand this. And so you're not going to understand something that you haven't experienced just yet. But it's my journey. And so after I did that with the health and, and wellness side of me and, 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 and felt comfortable with the energies, I was able to evolve even further, you know, into the person in the physical reality that I was always born to be. And it, throughout this journey, you know, I, I, you know, my name, Bridget, I changed to Bridget once I evolved. And my aura, which was on a low frequency, has evolved to a really more powerful frequency. My thought process, my mental clarity has changed from just existing and not knowing my purpose to understanding and knowing how to just be. Because um, in the physical reality, sometimes we exist and we think that we can ju just came here to just do, 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 but no, no, no. We came forth for the experiences of being being in the avatar body but still understanding that I am God and so God doesn't have to do 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 God just has to be still and know that it is God and that might sound mm, like, what is she saying? It took me a long time to figure this out, but I want to share this with you too. It's almost like right now I'm sitting and I'm looking forward at this camera. But I also have a peripheral vision that I can see as I look forward at this camera. Not only that, I, I also have an area behind me that I can't see with my physical eyes, with my two eyes, but I can see it with my third eye. This space around me, the front, the peripheral, and the back is my aura. This is my circle. This is 
the larger part of me. And so let's say I am looking at myself or I am seeing behind me. I am feeling behind me. Just the idea of that, if you, if you embrace that thought, that is you. That is the larger part of you. Being. Being. See, we, 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 we begin to be when we can look at ourselves. When we can look at the body having the experience. Knowing that we are not the body. We are the aura. We are the energy. <laughs> so when we get to a place where we can observe the body, that's where we are in our God state of being. That's when we are in the now moment while we're observing the body sitting here. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Absent out of this mind, out of this limited two vision and using this vision to observe the energy around you means present with the Lord. And that's what really being is. That's what really being still and knowing that I am God is. And if you could maybe find some time throughout the day and just practice that exercise as if you are being, you realize in the physical there isn't really anything for you to actually be doing because it's going to come to you. It's going to happen. And when you are physically looking or doing something, maybe you have to go to work, you can still be at work and just be being God. <laughs> A lot of you um, may not be ready for that part, but I just wanted to share that part with you because that, that's really what we came for, for, to be, to be in the physical while remaining still and knowing that I am God. This video was from my heart to your babe. Be blessed. <laughs>